On the distant horizon I see the sun arising As adventure calls out my name Where dreams dwell, where the road leads No one can tell It's a spirit ride Far and wide Tales wait to be told Your mind's an open road Your brain is a galaxy Faces and places like flowers they unfold Your heart is your guide in the universe Far and wide Far and wide, far and wide Let your spirit soar far and wide Far and wide let your dreams carry you into the wild blue. Let yourself fly far and wide, far and wide, far and wide. Let your spirit soar far and wide, far and wide. Let your dreams carry you into the wild blue. Let yourself fly far and wide. Once again, Davy Davis here. I'm your host for Far and Wide. We're always in search of interesting faces and places, and we've come across a very lovely, interesting face, Lisa Picarillo. And Lisa, thanks for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Um, now, I've discovered you through singing and uh, guitar playing and singing, and just very, very impressed. Uh, wonderful, wonderful voice and songs. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a lyricist, so I'm really interested in lyrics. You have great lyrics. Thank you. And, uh, you know, they're just terrific. So, you know, whenever you get a chance, you're going to have to hear this young lady sing. Well, actually, during the show, you're going to sing for us, which is great. Now, you know, where do we start? Um, where did you begin your life? And well, I grew up uh, in Connecticut, in Riverside, Connecticut, and um, was very lucky that I had a very supportive family. Um, my father was a guitar player, a musician as well, and so there were always many guitars, just like this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> around the house, and uh, he let me play anything except the Les Paul. So, uh, wow. yeah, so I was allowed to sort of play around and look at his chord books and watch him and his friends play and um, I was always enthralled that way. I did, you know, elementary school band and orchestra and all that stuff to sort of build my chops and sang a lot of choirs wow. and started writing songs when I was probably 12. 12 years old. Yeah. Uh, does your dad still play? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, he, yeah. He does. Yeah. He doesn't play out too much, but he and his buddies get together pretty regularly and jam he's got, out. He's got an old Les Paul. Yeah, 75, I think. Wow. Yeah. What kind of music does he do? He does a lot of rock. Old, yep. you know, classic rock. Um, Stones, Bruce Springsteen, Beatles, James Taylor. Paul Simon, all the great songwriters, and that's sort of where I got my inspiration in the beginning. Cut your teeth, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah it's great to grow up with that in that environment. Mm -hmm, that, absolutely. That doesn't hurt. And what about your siblings? Um, I have one younger brother, TJ, and he is uh, six and a half years younger than I am, and he's a musician as well. Wow. Yeah, and uh, he's he's phenomenal. He's an excellent guitar player, songwriter, and he's just the kind of kid that will lock himself away for hours on end and practice and practice and practice and that's how you get good. Now I realize I met your brother mm -hmm. and I I did hear him play and I, I was 
pretty impressed. He's my little brother, but he's almost a foot taller than I am. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's a terrific player. What you both are so talented, and uh, it's kind of neat that you do music together. Mm -hmm. You know, not many brothers and sisters can do that. And then you get together with your father and play. Yep, it was great when we did our when I did the CD release tour for my record. Um, all the band came and stayed at my house when we did my hometown CD release show. And uh, it was my dad's birthday that night, actually. And we stayed up until about 3 in the morning playing with everybody, <laughs> rotating guitars. And yeah, it's a, really, it's a really special experience to be able to do that with your family and friends and bring them all together, you as let, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you let me know when you do that again, and I'll, I'll come film. Absolutely. Film the whole family. Absolutely. That'd be, that'd be great. So that, uh, I guess that laid quite a foundation, um, you know, right there, being in a musical family and um, the, uh, so you were writing at, a, at such an early age, 12 years old. I mean, I would write silly little songs sort of when I was in elementary school and, you know, I was, I, I, rem I don't remember how old I was, but I distinctly remember a moment where I realized that I could write a song hey, this is just a melody, and I sort of understand the concept of how a melody yeah. works, and, you know, once I learn how to play an instrument that I can put behind it, I can, I can write a song. And, uh, and, yeah, I started writing with a guitar and, you know, writing folk songs, pop songs, when I was about 12. And uh, I was also lucky to grow up in a community where they had open mics and where they really encouraged the arts. Um, so I started playing open mic night when I was about 12. They had a, a, a teen <laughs> open mic night. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was great. And then my next door neighbor at the time, Erica, um, we formed a little acoustic duo and we would play out around that time. We were in middle school. In middle school? Yeah. You guys were playing out. <laughs> it where, always felt like the right thing to do. But that, that town, where is that near in Connecticut? Um, it's a suburb of New York City. Um, oh, really? Down on Long Island Sound, yeah, Riverside, Greenwich, Stamford area. Wow. Yeah. Quite a rich community. I mean, rich, not only maybe financially, but I mean, as you say, in the arts. It was, yeah, I was very lucky to grow up there. Yeah. I'll be on the, on the water, um, five minutes away from the beach, which has been a huge inspiration for me. There are some songs on the record about, about what it's like to, to watch all the boats come in and, and be inspired by that. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm always interested in the muse and where this stuff comes from, you know. Because, I mean, you're, you're kind of a prolific writer. Thank you. You know, it's, uh, well, we've, we've just, uh, we're working on this show, this concept about taking a title mm -hmm. of a song and giving it to, you know, five writers, artists, and uh, having them uh, give their rendition. And Lisa, you, you're one of them. And... Uh, You've already finished yours, so I have. <laughs> so we'll get to hear that, which will be neat. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was a good it was a good title. It fit right into my wheelhouse of <laughs> of ocean and yin and, and yang, seascapes. Yes, the ins and outs of love tide. You know, romances and I mean, isn't it isn't it amazing? I mean, we need fodder, you know, for songs, and certainly. We get it in these relationships we have with one another, particularly the, the kind where <laughs> it gets serious. <laughs> uh, Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in that regard, I mean, do you get a lot of material? I, I, I do. I, I have always been uh, the kind of writer who needs truth in her songwriting. Um, a lot of people, I, a lot of my favorite writers, um, are able to look stand outside of a situation and look at it and write about it and I've I've tried to do that I find that a lot more challenging um, in my most recent writing I've I've tried to challenge myself in terms of, of really getting getting to the bottom of other people's situations but in the past it's really been about my own and I okay. find that that's the the deepest songwriting is the, the ones that you've lived yeah 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 what the uh what kind of experiences have you had, you know, like interesting experiences in your journey of singing and songwriting and, you know, mm. being in different situations and sometimes things get comical and 
they may not seem it at the time, but then you look back and you go, oh, that was funny. <laughs> well, you know, just the, the emotionality of, of being on tour and, uh, and, and getting to play with some of your best friends and, and your family um, for my CD release tour. Um, it was a couple of my greatest friends. Um, and uh, my brother came on tour with us and played guitar. So, you know, you're, you're packed in a van like sardines with all your equipment and there's, you know, no room to put your elbows and you're trying to find, you know, a place to sit and, and uh, get along and eat, <laughs> trying to feed all those boys on the road. Um, no yeah, no some, other females? No, just me. Wow. Just me. That's an education. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know, I, I've always gotten along I've always gotten along well with boys. <laughs> Women tend to be um, a little a little too competitive for me at times. I learned that at a young age, and um, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I think that sometimes in in a young environment, in a middle school sort of adolescent environment, that anybody with with talent is uh, is is ostracized a little bit. You know, if if the others don't have that. Um, yeah, good point. So it was a, it was, it was a little, it's a little rocky there in the middle school years, but, uh, but now you know everybody's really supportive, and I've, I've gotten to sing with a couple amazing women, um, Edie Carey for one is one of my great inspirations, and Rose Cousins, who's a Canadian singer-songwriter, um, I've gotten to share the stage with them a couple times, and they've been very supportive, having me open for them, and uh, those have been some great experiences, and getting to learn from. You know, a solo woman on the road, and what it means to be alone out there, and yeah, and doing it, absolutely. It'd be a very humbling uh, experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something I've noticed about you. I, you know, obviously I don't know you that well, but um, you have a, a nice humbleness to you. Thank you. You know, and that to me, that's it's so important. Um, we're all part of this musical um, puzzle expressive thing this big organism and you know and when we do this stuff we really corny as it sounds we we really have intentions to make this world a better place and get rid of the bullets and put some notes out there absolutely you know I think the humility comes from being grateful I'm grateful and I I was given this I was given this, and I and I, I I reaped it, and I, you know, made it grow. But uh, it it was certainly a gift in my life, and I'm I'm not quite sure who I'd be if I weren't if I weren't a singer. I'm I'm a teacher as well, so I I think that would probably be my my other passion. But uh, I'm I'm grateful for this voice every day, and uh, for the places that it's brought me and the people that it's brought me, and. Uh, it, I, don't, I don't ever forget that. Yeah, I'll tell you, it brings us, the listener, uh, great joy. You know, when I first heard your CD. It, it, now, do you have one CD? Right now I have one, yeah, one full-length record. And that's the um, one I have. Mm -hmm, it's called Momentum. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and that came out in October 2008, and I'm very proud of it. I wouldn't change a thing about it, and that's very valuable, and I'm grateful for that. Um, recorded all here in Vermont. Yeah. Um, in Charlotte, Vermont, at what was Charles Eller Studios and is now Lane Gibson Studios. Of course, my cousin. Yes, yeah. yeah. See, it all comes together. It does. It, it all circle. comes together. And uh, what a beautiful place that is. What a tranquil and inspiring place. And I don't know if even you know this, but I recorded there in college with my a cappella group. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Now, where did you go to college? Skidmore College. You went to Skidmore. Mm -hmm, in Saratoga Springs. Good and there college. were a couple. There were a couple guys in the group from Vermont, and one of them had had an internship at the studio and said, I really want to go record some of our material here. And uh, that's how I originally met Lane. And uh, he, he noticed that I had an ear, a very sensitive ear that was, that was good for tuning. And sometimes yeah. he'd say, oh, I want Lisa to come in here and listen to this. And so we formed a relationship you know, 10 years ago. And then I, I, I knew then that that was where I wanted to record um, my full-length record when I got around to doing that. And uh, there have been so many other connections since then. 
people I've played with that have led me to the right place. <laughs> led so me here. You kind of just open yourself up and, and you do, you kind of get, you know, where to go. It just, it takes you there. Yeah, Cousin Wayne is, to me, one of the finest gentlemen that I've ever known. And uh, you know, Very talented. And, very talented and, and Also humble. very humble. Very humble. And you would never know. I mean, he won't broadcast his talent, but, you know, if he sits down at a piano, I've, I've, been, I've been blown away by him. Very lucky to work with him. He engineered the whole record and is such a calming presence. Yes. When you hear his voice come over the headphones, you know, you're just, you're, your energy is in the right place. Very, very special. His, his, uh, his father was a very special man too, and he just passed away. Uh -huh. um, but uh, you know, you certainly can see it in in Lane. And I was fortunate; we just uh, collaborated on a song together. He had an old piano groove from years ago, and my brother and I said, resurrected it, you know, from the archives, and said, "That's a great groove." Hey, Lane. Why don't you finish that groove, you know? So he did, and, and of course, me loving lyrics, I said, let me put some lyrics to that. Yeah. So I wrote that part of it. So it was, it was fun collaborating with him. But uh, speaking of keyboards, you play keyboards too. I do, I do. This is sort of a newer development. I've always loved the piano. Um, we had a piano in the house. Um, I think that was my 12th birthday. I was, that was like the, the big present with the, with the bow on it, got it secondhand from an elementary school and wow. a great little upright piano and I always sort of dinked around on it. Um, but just just recently this summer, um, my family and uh, Seth's family got together and pulled their resources and got me got me a keyboard this summer. So that's wow. I can have that in my in my place all the time and and uh, try to practice every day. So I've been I've been finding a, a whole new, a whole new brand of songs coming out of, of the keyboard. Lately, they've been a little bit darker, um, a little more. Um, the boundaries are, are a little blurry. I feel I feel very not constrained, but I feel like I stick to a pattern more when I play the guitar. You know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, yeah. bridge. Um, but with the piano, it's just. There, there are no frets, there are no lines, and yeah. I, I, felt, I felt the freedom of that. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah, so trying to teach myself that and always learn how to play songs of people that I love and then, you know, and then translate their tricks you. into, yeah. Yeah, into my own into writing. Own writing, yeah. Sarah Do McLaughlin was big for the piano when I was, when I was younger. Terrific talent. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Do you uh, do you read music? I I a little bit, yeah. a little bit. Um, not enough to hurt you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and not, and not enough to to read piano music. Like I can't sight read piano music. Right. Um, when I do, when I read guitar, I can read tablature, but you know I sort of have to yeah. sit there for a minute and stick my tongue out and <laughs> figure out what's going on. Um, my most of my music reading experience comes from choir, so it's yeah. all vocal. Learning, it was basically just are the notes long or short, and do they go up or down, and how much. <laughs> you have such a natural sense of it, though, you know. Thank you. That's I think that's why I've I've always skirted actually learning the theory behind it. Um, I'm with you on that one. I not I, I would I would love to, and and sometimes I do feel inhibited in my writing. Like if I if I only knew that one chord that I was trying to get out of myself right now. Um, but some of the magic, some of the magic to me is just having it come out of me and, yes. and, and not knowing how I know it, but it's there. It's just this force that's amazing and, sometimes. And some of my favorite writers are, are that way as well. Yeah, they just, just play, feel. I mean, I mean, I've seen people who actually, you know, they can read perfectly, but if you put them in a situation, say we're all around just with instruments, mm -hmm. they don't know what to do if they don't have any sheet music. Right. And I feel sorry. I mean, I'd like to have it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but uh, you do see those musicians who are well trained and, and well schooled, yet they still can just use that and with their feeling and yep. put it out there. 
a lot of people just play by the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. play by their numbers and feel sorry for them for that. But uh, but music, I'll take it, no matter what. I'll any take way it you over. slice it. Yeah, any way you slice it. Hey, there's a song. Why don't we write one called <laughs> Any Way You Slice It? Perfect. We just copyrighted that, by the way. So you can't don't take steal it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to have to... Uh, um, we're going to have to have you play. You're going to play some keyboard, and some play guitar. Some keyboard, and, sure. And, and uh, is there anything that you'd like to talk about that, you know, I, this is purely spontaneous, this show, <laughs> folks, far and wide. We, uh, we don't get sophisticated beyond repair. <laughs> we uh, just discover things on the cuff. It's sort of like playing music. Uh, we just play by feel and just inch our way along and see what the muse will give up, even though we aren't even looking for it. Happens. So, yeah, it happens. So, any things that you want to talk about that we haven't? Well, I want to thank about? you for for giving me the challenge of of taking a song title and writing a song around it because that that was not something that I'd done before, and um, I uh, I was able to use like you said an old groove that was sort of lying around and and I I was inspired by that and and thought that that might work um, and. Uh, you know, song titles can be can be the main theme of the song. They can be, uh, you know, two words in a song. They can be no words in a song, and you could just, you know, yeah. name, name the song after that. But uh, in this case, I used um, it's it, the song title "Love Tide" is sort of tucked away in the in the second verse, but the the theme is definitely there of being of being pulled back, of being, you know, feeling the feeling the undertow. And, uh, the undertow. Yeah. Life is full of undertows and undertones, <laughs> overtones. Yeah. You know. But, uh, so let's uh, let's have a listen to Lisa Piccarello. I'd be delighted. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I had never been asked to write a song around a title before. Usually, when I write. I write the song and then I pick out an appropriate title. So it was uh, it was a good challenge for me to to start with a new building block and and try to go from there. Uh, I actually had pieces of that song in various places and I wasn't really sure what to do with them. And as things in life happen, the opportunity was given to me and I said that's what I'll do with them. So I sort of combined the pieces I had and and. and brought some new aspects into it that I felt would be appropriate for the song and uh, and I'm happy with the way it came out. I can't wait to hear everybody else's. This is Love Tide. Thanks for the challenge of writing it. <laughs>
this is a song that's uh, tentatively called Understand, and it was about a little guy that I worked with um, in my most recent teaching experience who had a really crummy home life, never really knew when he was going to see his parents. His siblings had been split up into various foster homes and other relatives, and uh, I worked with him on a daily basis, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to keep him out of trouble, and uh, so this is for him. Tell her, and it's about speaking the truth.
This is called You Never Say, and it is the first track. Um, and I'm lucky that most people tell me it's their favorite off of my record called Momentum. Positive. 
positivity.